Let's talk with Dr. Stan Frager, helping you make sense of life's daily challenges and much more on 970 WGTK. Doctor, my eyes have seen the years and the slow parade of fears without crying. Now I want to understand. Doctor, my eyes. Rocking along with. Professor Eli Karam. Dr. Karam is at the University of Louisville's Ken School of Social Work, and we're talking about those questions you need to ask before you get married. And goodness sakes, if you are married, let me tell you something. These are very important questions. What's amazing is how many couples have been married for sometimes a long time and don't talk about these issues and go on for years with problems because they don't want to talk about them. Right. And sometimes what what really, if you could just sit down, talk about it, be comfortable with it yourself before you could talk to your partner, it wouldn't be such a big deal. But people avoid and avoid and turn something little into something big over time by not being able to talk about it. And so you're right. These things we're talking about are certainly valuable before you get married. But if you haven't talked about it, by all means, figure out the answer for yourself and then figure out how to talk to your partner about it. Speaking about talking about it again for our next caller, I have two tickets for the premiere of No Kidding Me Too. It's an interesting film starring in Joey Pantoliano, which, believe it or not, was filmed in Kentucky and on the 24th will be on PBS nationwide and is premiering at the Clifton Center tomorrow night. We have two tickets, $35 a piece, which is to benefit Bridgehaven, which is a wonderful program here in our Louisville area for those suffering from alcohol, drug addiction and other mental illnesses. And they do just a great job. And that's Bridgehaven. But these are free. 571-2428. And if you would like to attend, it's at 7 o'clock. And it's tomorrow night at the Clifton Center. You don't have to even call in tonight. You can just go tomorrow night. It's very nice. And to benefit a very wonderful organization. But for our next caller, the two tickets are free. All right. Sexual issues. What about sexual issues? What what kinds of things need to be asked there, Dr. Carroll? All right. So as we start this conversation, things you can kind of ask yourself. Are you as sexually attracted to your partner as your partner is to you? Are you as interested in sex as your partner is? And are you as comfortable kind of with your own sexuality and knowledgeable about it as your partner is? Because you need to be comfortable with your own sexuality before you can start talking to your partner about it, as we said. And, and now, how do you just get comfortable? Some right. people, this is a very intimate, touchy subject to talk about. Right. And it might be you have a really good sexual connection with your partner uh, and you, you feel this, this instant connection, this energy, but you don't really talk about it. And I'm, I'm advocating it. even those couples that have a good connection still need to learn how to talk about it and how you become comfortable with it is just being able to talk to your partner about your experiences and be comfortable asking them about theirs. One of the number one things I see in couples where there is differing uh, kind of sexual histories or experience, one partner is always worried about, wow, how many partners has, you know, my fiance had, you know, how do I stack up compared to them? Uh, Am I doing this right? And they feel, you know, self-conscious maybe because of their own body, but also primarily because they don't have as many experience or as varied a sexual history as their partner. So being able to talk about that and kind of lay that on the table is very important. And being very open about, you know what, I like when we have sex. Um, I prefer in the morning than at night, or I prefer at night rather than the morning. And exactly. Uh, it, so day, time of day is very important. Number of times. Sometimes one partner is very highly sexually driven, and the other partner says, you know, once a year is just about right. Right. And knowing kind of drive level is very important because if you don't know that, you might be offended if you're used to having sex, as you said, you know, every day and your partner, you know, is a once a week type of person, especially initially, that's going to create, you know, different, again, different expectations, potential hurt feelings. So you need to be able to talk about that, certainly about drives. And we also do a lot of psychoeducation around kind of the ebb and flow of a sexuality in a committed long-term relationship and it will ebb and flow so the idea that you know things are hot and heavy in the beginning if your if your drive changes if your frequency goes down it doesn't mean that you don't have a good sex life it doesn't mean that you're not a healthy couple sexually it's just something you need to know and a lot of couples think they have created this 
unrealistic expectation, and if it if it wanes, there must be something wrong with the relationship. So if their communication is not there, if these other foundational elements are not there, they catastrophize when you know they take a dip in the sex life. And certainly, there's no bigger dip in in the sex life and marital satisfaction in general when the first baby comes. Uh, and that's another information for couples to know. If they think everything can just kind of keep going, then you know the, they're they're again putting themselves up to these expectations that no even the healthiest of couple couldn't meet. Now we're talking about some of the discussions you need to have before you get married, but these are obviously important discussions after you get married. And what's interesting about sex drive is there's a lot of myth around it. There's myth about how frequent people are intimate. Some people, it's it, they. If the men are talking in the locker room, you think it's twice a day. They'd like to be intimate with their girlfriend, wife, whomever. But that ain't the way it always is. And then, and I use eight pejoratively. <laughs> um, that just isn't the way it is. No, that's not the way it always is. And and, and it is important. And then. Another myth is understanding you can be sexually active very long in your life. Yeah. Uh, and the idea, uh, couples, which you're alluding on earlier, they, they get caught up in, in quantity over the quality of the experience. And for most couples in long-term enduring relationships, when you can have this, uh, as one uh, David Snarch, who's a sex expert, calls it wall socket sex, when you can have that, that's great. But it's 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 for most couples that have kids and have all types of other responsibilities, that's Look not out. realistic. You the guys, lines are open. Right. We'll Hang come on. back to that. Yeah, we'll come back. Stan Frager. Call now, 571-2428. That's